Today we will learn how the branchless max function in Solidity works. Specifically, we will be looking at the Solidity implementation, which you can find here. If you aren't already familiar with Solidity assembly, here's a quick rundown. XOR XY returns the bitwise exclusive OR of the variables X and Y. In Solidity, this would be written like this. MUL XY returns the product of X multiplied by Y. In Solidity, it would be written like this. So if x is 5 and y is 6, mol xy would be 30. gtxy returns 1 if y is greater than x, and 0 if y is less than or equal to x. The closest solidity analogy would be uint of y is greater than x, but unfortunately solidity does not allow us to cast booleans to uints. But why not just use the ternary operator to get the max? The ternary operator contains a branch, or specifically a conditional jump at the bytecode level. This increases the computation cost. If we can compute the max of x and y without a conditional jump, that will require less computational overhead. To understand the branchless max function, we must first understand the rules of the exclusive OR operation. By way of review, the exclusive OR function takes two bits and returns one if exactly one of the bits is one and zero otherwise. It kind of behaves like a not equal operator. If the two input bits have opposite value, it returns 1, and if they have the same value, XOR returns 0. If we combine two variables together with XOR, then the resulting value will have one bits where the bits of the input variables are not equal to each other. Here is an example. Wherever both A and B have the same bit value, the output is 0, and where they are different, it returns 1. Note that we use the circle plus operator for XOR. The first rule of XOR is that any variable x, x or 0, is x. Specifically, the 0 bits of x, when exclusive ORed with 0, will produce 0, and the 1 bits of x, when exclusive ORed with 0, will produce 1. This means that the bit values of x get preserved. All of the 0 bits in x become 0 in the output, and all of the 1 bits in x become 1 in the output. The second rule of XOR is that any variable exclusive ORed with itself is 0. Remember, 1 XOR1 is 0, and 0 XOR0 zero is 0. So if a variable is XOR'd with itself, that is, exclusive ORed with itself, is 0. Based on rule 1 and 2, we can deduce the following rule 3. X XOR X XOR Y is Y. The x xor x results in 0 by rule 2, and 0 xor y results in y by rule 1. I should point out that the order doesn't matter here. If we evaluate x xor x xor y, that is the same as x xor the xor of x and y. Both result in y. It might not seem immediately obvious that we can evaluate the xor in either order. However, we can use a truth table to show that x xor x xor y is identically y. First, we will generate the truth table for x xor y, then we will generate the truth table for x xor x xor y. Finally, we observe that this formula has identical values to y. So we have established that x xor x xor y is equal to y. We are now ready to revisit the Solady max function. First, we consider the case where y is less than or equal to x. In this case, greater than yx will evaluate to 0. Anything multiplied by 0 will result in 0, so we can eliminate the term shown here. Finally, we are left with xor x0, and we know that results in x. So if y is less than or equal to x, the function returns x as the max. Second, we consider the case where y is greater than x. If y is greater than x, then gtyx evaluates to 1, and multiplying x or xy by 1 evaluates to x or xy. We now have x or x, x or xy. But we know from the third rule that x, x or x, x or y evaluates to y. Therefore, if y is greater than x, the entire expression will evaluate to y returning y as the max.